This is geometry uh, we're going to use for to create graphs. We're going to uh, do three uh, methods. We do for coordinate from here to there. We're going to do a, approximately the same with quick and dirty by selecting no, nodes from here to there. And we make this edge we're going to select uh, and create a graph from that. Um, I'm going to the tools to show the, the values, expressions. I named them. So here we have the height 12, width 6, and length uh, 100. So we're going to use 20%. So the real uh, I, Y value should be 20. Okay. So we're going back to the pre post. I already solved it. And we open those parts, we make this active, and we go to the structural analysis because graphs are created for <coughs> uh, in the graph is made for what you select. And we're going to, for example, we're going to select uh, the elemental nodal, and in this case, we want to be the bending stress, and that is yy. So, and we have the bending stress. Now we're going to create a graph from here to here at 20%. So we're going to create a graph. I'm going to reset the menu because if you use graph, okay, then we're going to select graph by path length. Uh, define my query. We create here coordinates and then we give a name, uh, bending stress in this case, court. And we type in, and we now we know the values, or we knew the values. So the first point is six, and then y is uh, 20 for 20 percent of 100, and the z is zero points one per line. And then you see the point created six, 20, 12. That's not nice. The bending, the displacement shown is uh, shows the point above the beam, but the bending is largely exaggerated. We do OK. Then we go, it's important we do use intersect locations. And because the mesh is relatively fine, you get points. So you don't have to drag here at other if you sometimes if you have to little points drag here to create more points. So it is okay. And then we go to be okay and we select create new window. Takes a while and we see the expected values from minus this compression to stress positive. Um, that's okay. Now we're going to use the second trick. We're going to do um, create a graph. Uh, this is um, uh, maybe we do in this case the bending stress. This y, y z, uh, the shear stress y, z, and we do quick and dirty, create graph, uh, we create a new graph, and we create this as uh, quick and dirty shear. In this case, here is y, z, your, depending on your X system. And we say, okay, we select point here and we select here then you can select here to get the other point and then you select the nearest point okay 
and now you see that you have nice points and now you will see let me see if that's uh, yeah you get more that's nicer and we do this and this is this and this the shear size is around 60 and this is around minus two that's nice okay um then the third option around the edge create a graph we do uh, we create a here we don't pick notice notes on edge and then we can select selection took some time a project curve maybe we take uh, we yy stress on edge the same user and second project curve that's good and now I messed up or not messed up but I did not went to YY, so we have the shear stress selected. So we will look at shear stress. They will be, this should be constants above. Okay, you have some problems with the, the constraint, fixed constraint, and then you see this remains fairly constant. And you have here some stresses uh, because of the force. So this is what we expected. I expected. And uh, okay. Can we? Okay, you cannot rename them. Okay. Uh, last of it is um, uh, the reaction force. And we go to reaction force and we have the, the, the Z direction. Uh, force so we look at the reaction force at z direction yes that's correct yeah and oh yeah sorry with the other side that's fixed and then we go to identify and we don't note single but we go to feature face then the summation of all force and this should be equivalent with 100 so that is nice so that's everything what I want to show three methods to get a graph and how to retrieve the reaction force thank you for your time